Hello and welcome back to the station. Today we are going to build a dive bomber in Blender. And you know what? I'm partial to the Dauntless, okay? I like the Douglas SBD Dauntless. It's not as sexy as a Hellcat. It's not as fast as a Tomahawk, but it, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like the dad bod of dive bombers, you know? Um, it's just, it's, it's like a Clydesdale. You know, it's not a Mustang, it's not an Arabian. It's just a beaut, it's like a workhorse, you know? It's kind of like Old Faithful. The Douglas SBD Dauntless played uh, one of the most significant roles in the course of World War II, just in general, not just with planes, but in general. Um, it was considered obsolete at the time and scheduled for replacement before the war began. Um, but this, this, this workhorse absolutely lived up to its nickname. So it, the SBD, um, stands for uh, Scout Bomber Douglas, but uh, pilots and the, the lieutenants and the fighter pilots who who drove these sons of guns gave them the nickname Slow But Deadly, um, and that's that's exactly what they were. Like they uh, fighter pilots would not give these planes up uh, willingly or without a fight. They were just they they did real damage and uh, just an absolutely gorgeous ship and a testament to. Uh, the spirit of aviation and American might and willpower and uh, you know I, you don't have to be the biggest you don't have to be the strongest you don't have to be the fastest if you have the will to persevere and persist uh, you're probably gonna win and that's uh, that's that's what the Dauntless represents to me you know right it's the old Napoleon Hill quote uh, there, there is no heroic connotation to the word persistence, but uh, that quality is to the character of man what carbon is to steel. So we're going to do a Dauntless, and I invite you right now to open up Blender and uh, follow along with us and build this with us, because I think you can do it, and I think you're going to do great, and I think we're going to fill the skies with Dauntlesses. Daunt, Dauntlesses. Don't lie. So first things first. Let's add a reference image. Now, um, we're gonna shift A, image, reference image, and then go and find the image on your machine, add it, okay? So I'm just gonna hide that cube real quick just so you can see this, this reference image. Now, the reference image I'm using is from um, a technical artist named Keith Broomfield, and this guy did some great work in the 60s, but I can't find anything about him after about 1992, so I don't know if he died or if he was just already, you know, because he was making work in the 50s and 60s. By the way, this is this is a, a technical drawing, um, so it's not it's not a a, a blueprint, so it, it won't match up perfectly, and we'll, we'll just deal with that. I'd rather look at a pretty picture than look at a a soulless blueprint. But if you want to use the blueprint, you can go to the minus blueprints dot com. Anyway. Um, this is what we're going to run with. So first things first, actually, I've already said that. So I guess second thing is second. Um, I'm going to create a new collection up you know, and I'm going to call this reference images right off the bat, right out of the gate. I like to keep, I like to keep a tight organized shop. I'm going to take my empty and put it here. And also the name empty doesn't do me a lot of good, ladies and gentlemen. So let's, let's call this, um, well, we'll call this, front view okay and I can't see behind it right now but I want to see behind it right now so if you hit opacity click that you should be able to see these lines now we can use these lines and line up our image I'm gonna G to grab Z to grab on the Z axis and then I'm gonna just zoom in here and I'm gonna grab this on the X axis and move it over so you can see right away that we're not perfectly straight because of that I'm gonna rotate it on the uh, on the z-axis and then I grab this over here like that we've got this on the ground and this I'm gonna call this about halvesies right do your best to kind of get this halfway and you can see it might be halfway here it might be a little bit off again it's not gonna be perfect because uh, this was this was painted by a human hand right so now that is set up on our ground in front view 
and we need to do a few more views, okay? So I'm gonna shift D to duplicate my image, lock that in, and then let's rotate it on the Z at 90 and hit enter. Um, you can see I've just got a little sliver right here. I'm gonna G to grab this on the X axis, bring it back here, and then I'm going to turn, I'm gonna, I'm gonna middle mouse button. You can also hit numpad three to kick right into side view. Um, first, I'm gonna grab my front view. You can see I've got this orange line here. That's my front view reference image. I'm gonna grab it and move it back on the Y axis, okay? All we're doing is we're setting up our reference images so that we can model from reference. Um, okay, and now inside view with numpad three, Let's line this up. I'm going to grab it on the Y axis. And I'm going to try and move so that the, the tip of my spinner just matches up there. And then to make it match up with our front view, let's grab it with G, move it on the Z to bring it down to the ground here. Okay, whether or not this lines up perfectly is TBD. The SBD is TBD, LOL. And so we've got front with numpad one, ready to roll. We've got side view with numpad three, ready to roll. Let's do a top view as well. So let's call this side view. And now let's, sh let's go to front view and Let's shift D to duplicate that. We'll call this top view. And let's rotate it negative 90 on the X. And if we hit numpad seven, there we go. And let's rotate it 90 degrees. So now we have a, now this is as if we are above our Dauntless looking down. And then let's do the exact same thing. So let's grab it on the Y, bring it down here, and I'm gonna bring the tip, um, and then do the exact same thing. So we're gonna grab this back on the Y, match just the tip right there, grab it on the Z, and we'll call that about halvesies, more or less, right? And then you can see, just because it was halvesies there, doesn't mean it's halvesies all the way down. Our plane. You can see we're a little we're a little off here. Um, so we'll move this back like that, and we're still off back here. So this is this is one of the problems with going from a, a technical drawing or a mechanical drawing. You can see that to get halvesies at the at the back of the plane, we're already off. Um, at the front of the plane. Well, Keith, wherever you are and whatever corner of the sky you're flying, your technical drawings are not as precise as they could be. Still beautiful though, easy on the eyes. Um, if you do want this to be absolutely perfect, you're gonna have to find um, an actual blueprint. And I'll link to a few of those in the description of this video. So, um, real quick, if we hit one now, you can see we've got this here. Let's grab this and move it up on the Z, okay? Now, this is just um, a tidying up note. So you can see that we have a front view with numpad one, a side view with numpad three, and a top view with numpad seven. Um, I personally, this is just a personal preference thing, I don't like to see both sides of my reference images. So I'm gonna hit top view, and then I hit front front right here. And then I'm gonna hit front view, and I'm gonna hit, oh, I guess, Oh, because I flipped it. Got it. I understand. That's why you might need to hit. If you flip your image, you're going to need to hit back. I want. I only want one side of this thing facing me. And then I'm going to hit side view here, and we'll go back again. So now when we move around, it disappears. Okay? I don't want to see the back of this image. I want to know that I'm looking at the right side of the image. And you can just move around. I'm just moving my middle mouse button to kind of confirm. And this just kind of... This just kind of boxes in and lets me know I'm looking at the right thing. Um, it's it's just a matter of taste. Okay? So look, you can't see the grids. If you want to be able to see the grids, which we do, hit back. Okay? And then side view, same thing. Can't see the grids, so we hit 
back. Okay, no problem. Top view, back. There we go. And now when we go like this, we don't see it. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're ready to model. If you got here, excellent. We're ready to roll. You're doing great so far. Okay, so I just kicked over into side view real quick. I don't want to accidentally unintentionally move any of my reference images over the course of this model. So what I'm going to do is make it so that I can't touch them. So if you toggle this selectable on, now if you unselect it, now none of these things can be selected. So you can't accidentally move it as we start building stuff. So let's make a new collection and I'm going to call this collection Douglas SBD Dauntless. I'm going to add a circle with Shift A. Okay, you come right up here. And then lock it. Uh, without hitting away from it, you can come down here to where it says Add Circle. And make sure your vertices are set to 16. Otherwise, it'll be, uh, well, you're just going to be adding more geometry than necessary. So if you can't see it, you should be able to see it down here, this, this highlight orange part. We need to rotate it. If you want to see it, you can hit Numpad 7. There's your circle. But in front view, we need to see it. Uh, we want it to line up with uh, with uh, the fuselage, with, with, with our airframe, okay? So let's rotate it on the x-axis at 90 degrees and then lock that in. We're gonna hit S to scale and bring that down. We're gonna grab with G and move it up on the z-axis and then come here and then we're gonna hit S again Okay, that's that's pretty great. So, uh, learning opportunity. If you hit S, you see it's not it's no longer uh, scaling from the actual object. It's scaling from the three D from the cursor where the object was. Okay, this is the scale point, but we don't want that at all. We want it to be this little center point right here. So, if we come up here, okay, where it says transform pivot point. Right now, it's at three D cursor. Try hitting bounding box, and then when you hit scale, look at that. Okay, that's just pro tip. So let's grab it and move it down on the Z. And then when we scale it out, okay, about there. Now we're going to hit numpad three to come in the side view, and let's grab it, move it back on the Y about here. So if we hit extrude, you're gonna see nothing happen. You say, well, why not? I'm, I'm hitting extrude, it's just not working. Take a look up here. Okay, this is object mode. Can't extrude in object mode. That's just one of the rules, okay? I don't make them, but we all have to follow them. You wanna extrude something? You need to extrude in edit mode, okay? With all my verts selected, I'm gonna select this son of a gun right here. And now when I extrude, this is great, but I don't want that at all. I need it to be locked. You can lock an extrusion by tapping Y. And uh, there you go. Okay, so let's bring this. Uh, I'm gonna bring this to right to the base of my windshield, and then let's scale it up with S to make it a little bit bigger. You can hit Numpad Seven just to kind of see how we're doing here. And you can see we need to scale this in on the X like that, and you can see we're gonna have to bring this in on the X as well, like that, to kind of keep with the body. You can see I, I only did one half right there, and you say, what the heck? Why are we doing that? Well, it's because we're gonna add a mirror modifier. All right, we're gonna work smarter, not harder. And you know, you know what, we can do that right now. So let's select these, and then delete these vertices, okay? Now, I'm gonna come over into object mode. I'm gonna hit this little wrench right here. This is our, uh, our modifier properties. This is our property panel, okay? And this is our modifier properties. Add modifier, mirror, and there you go. So now, if I hit tab again and go back into edit mode, I just have to move this one, and you can see it moves it on the other side. That's great. Super important, make sure clipping is turned on always, otherwise you can cross the streams. Um, if clipping is turned off, and you go to pull this away, you can separate them, or you can cross the streams right there. That gets very confusing. The clipping is on. Try and do that, and it can't. It just won't let you. Okay. I'm going to kick back into side view with numpad 3, and then let's extrude again on the Y. Right here, nicely done. I'm going to stop this, extrude again on the Y. I'm going to keep that going like that. 
And now I'm going to start to scale it just a scotch. You can see it's starting to angle. This is probably the, the lowest point of the aircraft and now it's starting to angle up. And then I want to hit numpad seven again and see how we're doing here. You can see where we're starting to bring it in so we can scale it on the X like that and start to bring that in. And don't worry that this is above our fold up here. We'll deal with this uh, in due time. So let's extrude again. And now we're gonna bring this here. And we'll, when we build out the canopy, we'll deal with this. Um, but for the time being, let's scale. Oh, I got proportional editing still turn on, I'm gonna turn that off. Let's scale this, see how that's working. Let's grab this up on the Z like that. Okay, looking nice, very sharp. I'm gonna hit numpad seven to come into the top view. You can see we're off over here and that's that's okay. We'll come back to it. We're gonna extrude on the Y again. And now we're gonna scale this down like that. We'll bring these up like that. Okay, maybe grab these just a scotch a little more. So we start to build as we as we approach our tail section. Now you can see um, truly how far off we were uh, in terms of centering, and that's well, we're just gonna have to deal with that, baby. It is what it is. Id est. Anybody speak Latin out there? Id est. Quote id est. Right. Um, man, Mr. Lobenfels was my Latin teacher, and she was such the smartest lady I ever met. Genius, a true genius, and just a wonderful educator. All right, let's scale this in. You know what? Let's do one more here and then scale it in like that. And we'll leave that like, we'll leave that like that. And then we'll, we'll build our rudder separately uh, when we build out the tail. But for now, as far as the frame goes, um, let's build out the front. Ooh, you know what I want to do? I want to extrude just the tiniest bit. We're going to add what's called a subdivision surface modifier later. And that makes it nice and smooth. And when that happens, we're going to want some, some extra geometry. But we can add a loop cut with control R and then move it along. We're going to add that as well because we're going to, we'll build out some, well, there's, there's rivets and there's like this hole right here. Um, for, for the exhaust pipe, you know, there, there's there's some things that we're going to do. We're going to add to our airframe, to the body of our, our aircraft, and we're going to need some additional geometry to do that. So let's extrude out on the Y one more time, and then let's extrude on the Y once more, and we'll scale that in right there. Okay, so now let's let's learn how to bevel. This is really fun. So let's alt click and then hit control B. And if you hit control B, you should pull back and you should see something happen right there. It splits it into two edge loops and this adds more geometry. And then if you roll your mouse click without clicking anything, you've just added more geometry. Okay. And we don't want to go crazy with this. We don't want to add so much geometry where we flood our system, but we, you know, it, it's more for the exercise of doing it. Control R adds an edge loop, bring it right down here, and then pop up into top view with numpad seven. And if you're using um, an actual technical blueprint, you're probably not gonna have this problem here. We're using the reference from a technical drawing, painting that was something hand drawn. Um, so we are gonna have these little these little tiny inconsistencies and we're just going to deal with that. Okay, so there we go. We got the body. Nice little airframe happening. We've got some geometry. It's a nice little introduction to box modeling. And uh, in the next one, we'll, we'll keep building out our plane. So get up, get a bend, get a stretch. And I hope to see you in the next one. Oh, before we go, save your work.